Hello. Hi, it's the two-minute Terminator. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry, it's... you oh, you gosh. interrupted me listening to Eddie Murphy, uh, Eddie Murphy, the Pussy Trap. All oh, right. Well, I just said uh, call you right back. I thought you said I'll call you back in a minute, and I was actually expecting it to be like a minute or two. But yeah. Anyway. Well, we Welcome are to live. Two Terminator. <laughs> Welcome to two-minute Terminator. There's going to be like a one-second delay, so we're going to start talking over each other and creating all kinds of audio messes for you, the poor listener. But I am Ethan McKinley. I'm the host of uh, the two-minute Terminator. Ellie, the crackling uh, voice on the phone, is the other co-host. <laughs> what? Is who, it really who, that bad tonight? It's a bit. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm in exactly the same place. I got my Wi-Fi on. Well, it's that plate in your head. You, you, you know, when they fire at the microwave, you piss your pants and forget who you are for half an hour. <laughs> yeah, is that what's happening right now? Kinda. Kinda. Anyway, dear listener, welcome to the show. It's the two-minute Terminator, where we actually watch uh, two minutes of the Terminator and analyze those two minutes. It sounds mad. It sounds analyze. crazy. And it is mad and crazy. Sometimes the shows are really good. Sometimes they're mm, middling to average. <laughs> And some of them are just some of them are pure shite. gold but that's it it's <laughs> you you take your pick you jump into the time portal and who knows where you might end up a back alley somewhere the middle of an intersection if you're watching uh, terminator oh genesis God. you might end up stealing the pants off a, a vagrant or a tramp who knows that's just like this show it's the time displacement equipment made real in a podcast i'm ethan mckinley this is two minute terminator hit the goddamn music Uh, the two-minute Terminator podcast was actually the talk of the floor today at work, Ethan. I should let you know. And Why was it on the floor? In, Pick it up and put floor. it on a table or an adjacent shelf. <laughs> Across the floor, uh, it was dripping from the fucking ceiling. Um, Sam, a guy that I work with, who started listening to our podcast a little while ago, he was talking. He came over to him. I was, and the thing is, he sounds like such an English chap. Like, fetch me my blunderbuss. Like, hello, Ellie. I was, I was listening to the telephonics ear things exactly. I have in my ears. The funny and, thing is, is he's uh, actually younger than me. And I thought your show was quite interesting. Although I've advertised it to everyone at work now, so your entire personal history will be known by anyone who listens to the show, which is the oh, bonus of this show. Like... <laughs> But no, he was saying about how he found it really interesting where you were talking about um, something about nuclear bomb testing or... He oh, was great. Up... Anything other he... than the Terminator? Well, no, because we were... it was in relation to the Terminator and he was like, yeah, I know loads of stuff about it. He was just like, you know, one day I'd like to do something like this. And I was like, dude, fucking come on the show as a guest. And he went, could could I do that? And I went, you, oh We've my asked him God. to do that before though. It's just logistics. No, no, that's... Ed, oh. this is someone completely different. This isn't Ed. This is Sam. Sam is the guy that put up that, that made Bell. that really funny comment about that um, alien picture okay. that I put on my Facebook wall. He like he fucking loves James Cameron. He's like you. He's a massive movie buff. He knows loads of like behind the scenes shit. Yeah, well, he was like he was like I would love to come on, and I was just like, dude, fucking come on the show. We always want a guest. We always want someone else to like come in and get involved. And he was just like, oh, my God, well, when you guys are next all together. He does like, realise like, it's Terminator Minute and not uh, yeah. new History of Nuclear Weaponry Discharges <laughs> Minute, right? Yes, but he is actually... He we're not, we're not going to uh, talk about Oppenheimer and the bomb for an hour. It's not going to be some, like, political him discussion. Him could really bond over weaponry. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But no, he he loves Terminator and Aliens. He, lo he has a massive love of James Cameron. Well, I'm more than um, happy to have him on the show. Oh, well, you, he's he's given you his blessing, Sam. So we're giving you a shout out. You can come on the show whenever you want. Well, obviously uh, you guys work in the week, so it would have to be at the weekend. We have to do like a weekend edition. But yeah, no, I'm all for it. We come alive when there's more people in the room. That's the only thing with this show. And it's well, not... actually, no, I disagree. Because the last couple of ones that we did, okay, not the last one we did, but the, the two before were fucking amazing. And we were actually in the same room. So that poo poos your whole theory that we're actually better when we're like over viber. Okay. I think it just I think it just depends on the day. It does. It does. It does. How yeah. are you feeling today, Ethan? 
I feel fine. I've uh, obviously got my uh, podcast coming up in two days with Graham Hancock, one of the world's foremost uh, Egyptologists, although he's not an Egyptologist or a PhD in that. Uh, he, but he's like a world famous author who's written innumerable books on uh, the ancient Inumerable. civilizations that uh, is humanity older than we think. Have the Egyptologists been lying to us that the Sphinx is actually, I think, yes. a minimum of 11,000 years old, etc.? India, basically, he's Indiana Jones. He found the Ark of the Covenant. We are going to cover he that in the show. He actually is. He really is. He's the real life Indiana Jones. Just minus the hat. Minus the hat. <laughs> but no, yeah, he's literally found the Ark of the Covenant and uh, wrote a book about it. Yeah, we went to go see him and he signed your book, didn't he? At he did. Foils. And, and you were like, cover my fucking podcast. I noticed that what you did is like when a, when an adult is speaking to a child and they're trying to get through, they get down on their level because Graham was sat down. You like crouched down and you got on like eye level and you were talking to him. And I well, was no, like, I mean, oh, I, look, that, at, I, look at Ethan pulling all the uh, pulling all the stops out. Well, it wasn't pulling the stops <laughs> out, but I just I think it's I don't think you have an intimate moment with someone if you're kind of looming above looking them. Looking down on them. Yeah. yeah. And I was I was yeah. like, Graham, look at me, babe. We need to do this. <laughs> look into my eyes. <laughs> Come on, my fucking show. And my face. I'll be your next Go wife. <laughs> right, so Ethan, back to the two-minute Terminator. What minutes are we going from and to? And well, what happens in the beginning of the two minutes? And what happens at the end? It's episode 51. I should start the show like that. Not every show is episode 51, but like I should say the number of the, the episode. Uh, it is episode... Baby, you do it however you want. No, I don't know. I just think we should start buttoning the show with like something official. So if anyone does start tuning in now, they'll be like, okay, this is a real show. <laughs> I know, but Ethan, from what I've experienced with you, as, so, as soon as you start to structure shit, like, you just, you shit at it. <laughs> this is true. Anyway, it's uh, episode 51. <laughs> we are going from the 100 minute mark, that's one hour, 40 minutes, to the 102 minute mark, the two minutes bridging that gap. And it essentially uh, ends or begins the scene, sorry, with uh, Sarah lowering her weapon. Uh, that she's aiming at Dyson, not that weapon. <laughs> and uh, it ends with uh, basically drinking a cup of tea with the Terminator as he explains what, <laughs> that you're, you've ruined the future. So at the start of the scene, we essentially see Kelly Tartan's finger on the uh, gun, which was an insert shot. So it wasn't Linda Hamilton's finger on the gun. And uh, yeah, it ends with, uh, well, I, f I took great interest on the drinks they had on the table with the Terminator. <laughs> Touch drinks. Last episode, it was the magazines. Today is the drinks. There is lots to talk so, about because obviously this is a very pivotal scene where she explains I, basically to Oppenheimer, the man who invented the nuclear bomb. This is the man, I guess, who didn't invent this stuff, but he kind of like it was he gave him ideas to create a new uh, CPU for computers, which creates essentially Skynet, which in James Cameron's films is a defense network computer. But in the new film, uh, Genesis, uh, Skynet is called kind of Genesis in a sense, so it's a bit like I guess Google meets whatever Uber. <laughs> Google meets Uber. Wow, now that's innovation. And so also, for me, sorry, carry on. Go on, on. No, please. No, your your point was carrying on from something. Uh, well, it raises a point in this clip because uh, we obviously see just before the clip ends, Arnold Schwarzenegger playing the T eight hundred Terminator, and John goes, "Show him," and he goes, "Danny, let's go to your room." Don't say it, Ellie. Uh, basically, he just peel he peels the skin off his uh, arm uh, with a knife and pulls the skin off, revealing that he is, in fact, uh, a working, functional robot, which I guess Dyson's only ever seen the arm. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the rest of the film, he's got a glove on his hand, a bit like Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> now, in Terminator Genesis, we're skipping ahead to season five of this show, if we even make it that far. <laughs> Uh, they mentioned in that film you won't remember this but I watched it recently they mentioned in that film by the time basically the timeline is so skewed in that film that first they're going to go to 1997 then they go no we're not going to do that we're going to go to 2017 I think mm -hmm. so they go for the time thing he puts his he, what does he do does he, oh no I know because he hung out the T-1000 in that kind of like acid bath he burned all the flesh off his arm mm-hmm he said by the time they arrived, he's going to have to wait it out and like live through the time, essentially taking the long route, a bit like Doc Brown in Back to the Future 1, 2, or 3. M mainly 1. But he said the uh, flesh would have regenerated on his 
on his arm. Now we discussed mm -hmm. this. So I always thought the flesh wouldn't regenerate because in Terminator One, when he gets shot up and banged up, the end of that film essentially, when he's in that kind of like seedy motel room with his eye missing and his his arm damaged, he's very zombie like, isn't he? Yeah, his skin's kind of gone blue. Like there's fly noises on the background, foley track. So it's like the intonation is obviously he's rotting he's away. Molding. Like the robot underneath is fine, but the tissue obviously, which hasn't been treated properly, has in fact died and isn't healing. So I yeah. guess the James Cameron version of the Terminator, if the skin is that badly damaged or the wound is so badly opened, uh, I suppose uh, you'd rot away. But in Genesis, obviously, if he cut the skin off his arm or he burns it off in an acid bath like in Genesis or he cuts the skin off in this, in the Genesis version, his skin regenerates. I'm not sure... What? I don't know what to feel, Ellie. I don't know what to feel. But then, but then how? <laughs> but then how fast does it regenerate? Because obviously he cuts the skin off his arm, and then the next scene he's sat at the table and the skin's back on his arm again. No, no, no. For the rest of the film, from this point on, the same way, the lighting has changed to show that he's becoming more human and. Uh, or is that the gloved hand? That's the glove hand. The SS Hitler-looking glove. That's why I said sure. he's very much like Luke Skywalker. It's like the Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker hand. When he gets it, like, shot and burnt by, uh, oh, God, who is it? Clatty, Barrage, or Nick 2? I think I'm going to go with Nick 2. There's three aliens, basically, in Return of the Jedi called Clatty, okay. Barrage, and Nick 2, which is a callback at the time uh, to the deactivation uh, password for Gort in the day the Earth stood still. Oh, my God, yeah. They use that again as the secret word in Bruce with Bruce Campbell in Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 3, which is yeah, the... Yeah, fucking do. <laughs> Clatu, Barata, Nick Nickel, <laughs> Necktie. <laughs> okay, then. Oh, That's it. Those that are again. the words. <laughs> yeah, but I think Is Barata... That exactly how they're said? Barata shoots Luke Skywalker's hand from that point on. He obviously wears the glove, I'm, I guess, for, for the filmmakers. They didn't have to worry about like putting a, like, a prosthetic hole in the back of his hand for the rest of the film. They just put a glove on him. The same way with this, to save money on effects and stuff, they put a glove over Arnold's hand. But yeah, the essential question of this is, do the James Cameron Terminators regenerate versus the Alan Taylor-directed Terminator Genesis-style Terminator, who obviously regenerates over a long period of time, of course, but gener regenerates nonetheless? What a conundrum. What do you think? Uh, I, don't, I personally think that once the skin is dead, it's dead, it's gone. See, that's how I feel. So I imagine this Terminator would have to die or be have his skin stripped off him because he'd start to rot at this point. Yeah, I, I, I fully believe that. Unless maybe if you were lucky, they might cauterize the end of the wound, but then you'd just have like surgical steel or whatever the metal it is that the Terminator machine is made of just protruding out of like raw damaged yeah. flesh. I think that's too much effort for somebody that they can just regurgitate out another model of Terminator. So it's agreed. I mean. The James Cameron Terminator... <laughs> I don't know. Also, I do... do you think he? Um, do you think he cut? Do you think he exposed his arm per se because um, of the fact that the relic that they do actually have at Skynet is the arm? Was that a specific reason? Do you think? <clears throat> why not? Why not? Like cut a bit of his leg, or I don't know. I actually, well, before we started this, I actually thought that wouldn't he just kind of like do a deep cut somewhere on his body and just go. Look at my ribs. They're made of metal. Yeah. It do, it... Why pull off the whole arm? Is it to prove that, you know, well, the arm that you've got in Skynet, that this is it in actual fucking motion? Well, I, I'm trying to think, would Linda Hamilton remember that there was an arm? I don't think... I doubt she would. And also, the she only learns about... she would have gone through. Yeah, well, there's no evidence of the... Well, there is evidence. It's a bit like... It's, well, the end of Terminator essentially is like the end of The Fly, the 1955 Vincent Price version, where the fly crushes his like, fly hand. Oh, that's the, fly the weirdest head movie. Under the press. Mm. So it's kind of the same as that. I don't think Linda, maybe she would have, like, was there any part of the Terminator left? I guess when he walks out know. of that, when he walks out of the elevator, and obviously they've met now, and he's explained how time works and, like, the future is still going to happen, the Terminator isn't destroyed, and the robotics factory where you had your showdown with the terminator they in fact found pieces of that machine and that's actually what i like the way kyle created john by sleeping with her the very 
evidence of the Terminator being in this time has actually made it, I guess, uh, manifest that this will still happen. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think she would have, all the time she was in hospital or the mental institution, I don't think she would have been thinking, ooh. Is there anything left? Is there no, any, I yeah. think that she would have been just so traumatised. I mean, because again, we have to think about how short a time scale that was, how young she was. Yeah, she it had her experience. Kind of like, She's been shell-shocked yeah. by it. Exactly. In and fact, she's... we've discussed this before because we were watching it the other day, but her, maybe it's a James Cameron trope, is she's very much like Ripley. She survived a, a traumatic experience with this like mm. unstoppable force. It keeps and, having these nightmares. And physically survived, but mentally, obviously, she's still... She's fucked. She's fucked, <laughs> yeah. And I guess her... But meet... Sarah's son survived. She won the sons. <laughs> Well, the same as Ripley's experience going back to LV-426 and fighting with the Marines and kind of, uh, I guess, uh, her redemption in a sense back to uh, normal life and normal mentality is like connecting with Newt, becoming the mother figure to her, redeeming herself, I guess, to some degree for a lost daughter. I guess, mm. you know, Sarah kind of meeting the Terminator and seeing that if he can learn to be human, maybe we can too. So, so can I. Well, for me, in this specific, I actually managed to loop it first time. When it hits exactly uh, one hour, 40 minutes, Sarah's looking deep into the eyes of her son and she goes, I love you, John. I always have and I always will. And he and goes, whoa, easy. <laughs> whoa, back off there, crazy psycho bitch. No, he, um, he whispers in her ears because I prefer the robot. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, she goes, tss, 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 tss. what do you know? You're just a robot. <laughs> but no, I think that's the first moment in which <laughs> you really see that kind of bonding between the two. And she becomes a lot more human. And, you know, she's come out of that blue lighting and she's in the more kind of fleshier tones, as we have discussed many a time throughout this uh, particular oh, finally. season. finally. Master Hugh has found a true love. <laughs> <laughs> What do you know? <laughs> You're just a robot. <laughs> uh, that's the Lisa's Future episode of The Simpsons with Hugh Parkfield. <laughs> the Simpsons actually was weird because, like, McBain obviously is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hugh, pa Hugh Parkfield is meant to be Hugh Grant. I think now they just get the celebrities to be that voice because Mel Gibson's been Mel Gibson on it and stuff. But it's just funny where's then. Where's Mel used... Gibson been on fucking Simpsons? Yeah, played himself. Never. I never saw that episode. No. Um, South Park love to do Mel Gibson. They do Mel Gibson so well. That's why I just thought that he was crazy as fuck, because in every episode, I think Mel Gibson's been in a few, he is just a fucking lunatic. Ethan, seriously, man, one day, I'm just going to inject you with liquid ketamine and just force you to watch all the South Park episodes, probably from season seven onwards, because the first seven seasons, it's kind of just like, childlike silly humor and the drawings weren't that great yeah whereas i say the drawings it's all like pieces of like paper and stuff but as it's got on oh my god it's so fucking funny it's topical it's non-pc there's nothing there's nothing safe that's what i love about south park so much those sensitive like subjects that people hate to talk about or you know, you'll see someone mention something on the internet and then everyone jumps in. It's like, you can't say that. How dare you? It's so insane. Like South Park literally fucking rams it down your throat and pulls out your goddamn spine. It's amazing. It's so fucking good. I mean, there was that particular episode where they actually showed a, uh, the image of Muhammad and then they said they, they were actually saying that they were going to ax the show, they were going to cut it. But they, when they first released it, me and my ex were actually sitting in front of the computer waiting for it to be aired onto uh, allsp.com, which mm. has now since been shut down. Uh, and we actually saw it. But then afterwards, when it was actually released on TV, they showed the episode. But like the uh, the network had actually like squared blocked out the actual image of Muhammad because it would have just fucking kicked off. But I think Trey Parker and Matt Stone got like so many fucking like death threats just from doing it, and they were like, "Fuck you, we're playing our fucking show." I was like. Yes, boys. See, the power of being a Jew, you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, so um, also another little point that I'd like to bring up in this particular scene. Can you imagine having sex, right, with a, with a Terminator? So the first thing we see when Arnold Schwarzenegger goes over to help Miles Dyson on the floor, he grabs him, he's really stiff, he's like, no penetration. Put your hand on here. Duh, 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 duh. 
it was it just got me with the penetration. I was like, can you iman- imagine like militant like machine robot sex? Lay on the bed, spread your cheeks, ass up. He'd probably just pump right through you and split you like one of those like uh, timber saws. <laughs> I have a fact attack for you. <gasps> fact attack. <laughs> wow, you put a horse in there as well. Well done, Ellie. <laughs> uh, what does a gay ha- What does a gay horse eat, Ethan? Hey. Okay, your fact Jeez. and only fact for this uh, episode, this spectacular effect that uh, obviously is created by Stan Winston as he peels the skin off his arm, looks still really good, actually. It does. I was trying to find bits that I thought looked a bit dodge, but I thought, no, Okay, looks well, pretty good. Well, here's dodgy radar, or dodgy dar. Dodge dar. The, the appliance that fixes his arm, this isn't the fact, by the way, the appliance that fixes his arm, or his fake arm, onto his shoulder, which is obviously put back... He's got one shoulder back and he's got this like fake arm stuck on the front of him. You can actually see the appliance that straps across his chest as he's like showing him showing them his robotic arm. So as he pulls the skin off, you can kind of see it under his thing. It looks a bit like the line or the wire off a radio mic that goes under someone's shirt. I'm literally just about to get to that moment oh, right oh, now. Oh god, you're in for a treat. <laughs> oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah. You've ruined it, so- Cameron. Wow! No, you can really see it. Oh my god! So his actual arm was that behind his back? Uh, his actual arm. Sorry, I'm just returning to the mic. His actual arm, uh, yes, would be like back, a bit like Dylan in Terminator when he's got the fake arm stuck on him. That must have fucking caned, man. I'm like, sure it's fine, but I mean, it's a spectacular effect. It still looks great, and it, it yeah, uh, it looks amazing. It really sells the fact that, that it's I don't know. It's such an intricate working machine that the actual terminator the mach- like the the hand the way it opens and closes cameron i'm not sure if he was trained in technical drawing but like all the drawings of the machines he did design were like as i said hardly altered uh yeah. for jet for uh stan winston's, well, stan crew. winston's the fucking man dude he is the man uh, but yeah, man. when he cuts his arm, it's basically a retractable knife with a little blood uh, pipe on the back of it. So as he drags it up his arm, it squeezes blood onto it. For me, that Sally looks a little bit like squeezing it looks, fake, fake that blood. That blood looks really, really fake. Yeah. This was something I was going to ask. Well, you. it doesn't. It doesn't look like he's. Two... He doesn't look like he's penetrating. It's obviously his real skin, but it doesn't look like he's There's cutting no into it. He looks like he's just dragging <laughs> uh, uh, fake blood uh, around his arm. Ask another question. I'm just going to grab something from the next room. You. Go on. Wait there. Okay. <laughs> My next question was going to be... I'm not in the room. Um, Wait there. Oh, God, that's horrible. Okay, well, I'm going to ask this to the listeners now. This is so weird because I'm technically talking to myself. I find it interesting how when they show certain scenes in movies, how the blood will look really runny or it'll be like a really light red colour. Like in this particular scene, like Ethan said, the blood just looks really thin and it almost it's almost like an orangey colour. Um, and yet in other scenes, it would be like really thick and gloopy. Um, I mean, is there a particular... I mean, you're looking at the blood that's actually on the endoskeleton there, on the arm. I mean, that doesn't look like blood to me at all. So I wonder, are there different types? Did they did they change, uh, like, what is it, fucking corn syrup, as Ethan always likes to talk about? Uh, Ellie? Yeah. I might have to listen to the episode back for that question because I did actually leave the room for about three minutes then. I know you did. Who are you talking to? <laughs> I was talking to the listeners and just airing it out to myself. Just trying to think it through. I'm talking about other different types. You've been of talking to the people. listeners without me? <gasps> well, you told me to. You cheat. What was I, <laughs> what was I going to do? I've dead air for a few minutes whilst you neglect your child oh i get you it left, pillar talking you the left the, you left the car running with the engine on and the baby seat wasn't even fucking buckled up look i just ran in to on get a, a, i ran in just to get line. one item i ran in to get a can of coke come on it's fine I can, I, can I yes i left the keys in the ignition <laughs> what do you want You opened the window, right? Now I was just saying, are there different types of blood they use in movies? Because the blood that you see on the um, when Arnold's cutting himself, and then when he actually pulls off the uh, the skin, 
it's really orangey and yeah. just doesn't look like blood at all. And yet in some other scenes or in other movies with special effects where you show blood, it's really mm. thick and it actually looks like blood. There's like a thick, gloopy consistency. Well, there is so a... over. There is a standard blood the movie industry uses, which is, well, I'm not sure what they use now, but when I, Evil Dead days, it was Caro syrup, which is corn syrup, basically, with red dye in it. So do we think this is corn syrup? Because this looks corn. Yeah, maybe some form of it. But also, I mean, it's, it's like really orangey. It's the way it's lit as well and stuff. Uh, it's that kind of thing. I mean, also, the big thing is the MPA, the Motion Picture Association of America, and the ratings board in this country and maybe to a lesser extent America, but you can't show like red blood. If you show red blood, uh, it gets like some wacky adult rating, like an R or an X rating. Uh... That's why in Evil Dead 2, uh, there's like purple blood, green blood. When he cuts his arm off, it's like black blood spraying onto his face, isn't it? Because if you and show like red white blood... blood as well. Yeah, when you show red blood, it's obviously too, apparently, I guess, too violent an image and they give it a high rating. Okay, explain this to me then. This is totally keeping in line with what we're talking about. I you know, cite as another Bill, example, like... Star Trek VI, when the Klingon uh, ambassador, Gherkin, is attacked and they uh, shoot his vessel down. All the dead people on board who have been killed, all the Klingons, was, they decided it, they'd have purple blood. Mm. So if it was red blood, which it wouldn't be anyway because they're aliens, they'd get a, like a higher uh, rating. We paid for blood! <laughs> Hans Mormon. <laughs> Sorry, ask your question. Uh, yes, uh, the scene in Kill Bill when um, Uma Thurman's in that, like, I don't even know what what you'd call it. There's that particular scene where it goes black and white, and they said they had to put it in black and white because there was so much blood in that scene. Yeah, Does the nightclub scene. With it? But yeah. you can get a Region 3 Asian, I think it's either Japanese or Chinese, but the DVD over there. They sell Kill Bill on DVD in a complete form, so it's the entire film. It's not in two parts. And, With all the blood scenes. And Well, that scene is actually in colour. It's only the European oh, wow. and the American version, which is split into two, I guess because it would be too long for people to watch. I guess now in movies, most films clock in at nearly three hours at yeah, easily. Well, the, the new Bond film, I think, is two hours thirty five minutes. So you well, know, that's two hours thirty five minutes. I won't be losing of my life. What is your, what is your problem with Bond? <laughs> I love old school Bond, but I'm the same with. Oh, actually, I'm not, I'm not even going to open that kettle of fish because I have not seen enough of the newer movies. So I'm going to just le leave that one well alone. Um, what's my does, problem? With does Bond? Daniel Craig bore you potato? But bored. I'm just bored of Bond. I really am. I'm. It's become. It's been done too many times. There's too many Bond esque movies out there now that are almost doing it. Dude, fucking. I watched the last Mission Impossible movie. I came out of that movie being like, I feel like fucking running over that car and then jumping sideways onto that building and running through a fucking. You overlooked your prejudice of Tom Cruise. Massively. I came out of that movie being like, fucking hell, that's awesome. I did not feel that way when I came out of the cinema and I'd seen the last James Bond movie. Yeah, he jumps the on the couch. Yes, he probably James drinks Bond blood. Movies. Yes, he's a Scientologist, but by God, he makes good movies. He really does. Fucking hell. I was actually crying watching The Last Samurai last night, all by myself, just feeling ridiculous. But I believe... And you had reason... Japanese men as well, so the combination of Japanese samurai men that you hate I know, and, and tom, tom cruise, cruise but you were moved was, by his death it was no it was zimmer i think it's zimmer music really affects me dude i can listen to a piece of music usually classical but i can listen to a piece of music and like you just get these like this wave comes over you and your your hair stand up on end and you get goosebumps and it's that particular moment when the guy's about to die in the last samurai and he looks and he sees the cherry blossom and he just you ruined perfect. the movie this is perfect. And oh my God, dude, I can't. And it's not like a tear out rolled down my eye. I was actually crying. And I was like, oh my God, get yourself together, woman. It's fucking schmooze. But oh my God, that moved me so much. And I'm sorry, but my favorite quote in a film at the moment is that last scene when um, Tom Cruise is kneeling before the emperor. And he goes, touch my cock. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> now suck my cock. They're called terrorists, Gary, and they want you dead. 
um, is when he says to him, tell me how he died. And he goes, he looks up at him through his bushy eyebrows and goes, no. Touch I'll my tell car. You how he lived. And I was like, oh my god, it's so cheesy, but I fucking love it. Oh. And then I shave my eyeballs. <laughs> Bathe them in <laughs> acid. Acid. <laughs> have you seen Legends of the Fall, Ellie? I have not. You should watch that because I, I think Tom Cruise saw Legends of the Fall and went, wow, Edward Zwick is a guy I want to work with. He just won. Well, he did, I don't think he won. I think maybe he won Best Picture or was nominated for Glory. Denzel Washington, of course, won uh, be- uh, Best Actor Oscar. Sorry, I'm uh, sorry, listeners. I'm eating bacon as we speak. That's why I left the room. <laughs> I thought you were getting Coke. One minute it's Coke, now it's bacon. <gasps> it better not be Huxley. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Huxley. <laughs> it's Pepper. <laughs> What Pepper Pig? Uh, where were we before we went? Oh, ba- yeah, basically uh, the, the color of blood. Oh, color of blood. But yeah, Tom Cruise. But I think he saw Legends of the Fall, which is an amazing film, and said, "I want to be in a film like that." And then he contacted Edward Zwick, and then obviously they made Last Samurai. Clearly, a well-made fe- film, very well shot. But I, it just it drags slightly for me. I don't know why. Uh, well, I think for me, The Last Samurai worked because I saw it in two parts. I saw the first half. And then I fell asleep. Um, I think it would have had more impact if you saw it in one piece. But I don't know. Because when I saw the second part of it, like I was more gripped than the first. But maybe that's because in the beginning it's the build up and he's training and he's learning to become a samurai. Because I was talking to my dad about it and he was talking about another film that's been made. But he actually read the book and I think it's called The Ronin or something. Uh, and I well, think Ro- there's the Keanu Reeves film, 47 Ronin. Oh, that's it. That's the one he's talking about. And basically, Ronin is what you are when you're training to become samurai. He was like, oh, you should watch that movie. No, it's not. I was like, I thought it was. No, I think Ronin means like a rogue samurai who doesn't have a clan, who's kind of like wandering, a bit like Kane in Kung Fu, wandering around and like looking for adventure or for employment. I'll Google it now. Mm. Google, uh, Oogly, uh, yeah, a, Quest- a Ronin, question for you. Ronin, a yes. samurai warrior with no lord or master during feudal ah. de- Japan. Uh, there's a oh, 1998 Robert De Niro action film, uh, which is, uh, oh God, who's it by? He directed The Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh my God, come on, Ethan, think. It's called oh Ronin, God. it's 1998. John Frankenheimer, there we go. It, uh, had, oh God, who was in it? Jean Reno, uh, Robert De Niro, Natasha Macalone. Uh, yeah. Never seen it, though, but apparently the car chase is banging. Banging. (laughs) I love it. I pick up on things you say, and you pick up on things that I say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Next question, Ethan. Uh, Little Danny Blackboy has just, you know, seen his house get broken into. Devon Nixon. crazy, Crazy white ladies just come in, like, with a gun, shoots Daddy. Daddy's on the floor. It's all a bit crazy. It's all a bit mental. Why would it be so important to take Danny out of the room whilst the uh, Terminator cuts off the skin of his arm and shows that he's a robot? Why? Why now all the sensitivity? I don't. I think yeah, I know. Be, I think it'd be quite important. For there should there should be a this. side sequel or a, like a Doctor Who Christmas special, but it, like it follows Danny, who's now obviously shell shocked by his family home being attacked, home house home being attacked, <laughs> and, his, and his dad being shot in front of him. And then his dad leaving that night and never coming back because he was killed in a, an explosion at the factory he worked at. <laughs> oh, my God. I cannot wait for that scene. <gasps> That's all the information young Danny would have. And then his mom one day when he was 18 ago, by the way, those people that came to the house, one of them... Was you a robot. Yeah, you won't believe this. One of them was a killer robot. Then they went to blow up the factory <laughs> that was going to make that robot. Stay with me, Danny. Honestly, trust me. <laughs> It would have made so much sense to have actually kept him in the room. They could make so, yeah. a mini series of him just slowly unraveling his life as he's trying to put the pieces <laughs> back together and figure out what's real and what's not. And his dad helping a killer robot by blowing up his factory and dying in the process after Why being shot. Why him and John Connor didn't like get together and like create this like team? I don't good cop bad cop. That would have worked quite well because one's black and one's white. They seem to love that. In good but like, a, what, immediately movies, after they? Terminator 2, so they're like, they're both yeah. still young. So he's like eight years old. John Connor's 10. Yeah, totally. And they just go around Dude, solving problems. Anything is possible. It's movie magic, baby. <laughs> like Cop and a Half with Burt Reynolds and the little black kid. <laughs> <laughs> like 
<laughs> what? Cop and a Half. What's that? It's a Burt Reynolds movie. Never heard of it. Oh my god. <clears throat> Ethan just left the building. No, no, it's a 1993 film. It's called Cop and a Half. I'll I'll put Is it, it on the notes actually. Uh, the DVD cover looks interesting. It's <laughs> <Burt> fucking Reynolds. <laughs> Although I will say this, in fact, I'll link you to it immediately. I'll send you a link on Viber. Okay. It's the second link I'm sending. If you look at it, it's got the font of Kindergarten Cop. So oh, they're obviously, amazing. They're obviously, movies kind of do this sometimes. Uh, there was a long time after Love Actually where all romantic comedies had like a white poster with like block red lettering. Okay. So it conjures up in your mind what kind of film it will be by suggesting that it's a bit like Love Actually. So if you like Love Actually, it'll be like this. I'm, I'm assuming they use the kindergarten cop font, which we know because it's only ever been used on kindergarten cop until those bastards uh, stole, it, stole it for 1993's Henry Winkler, who played the Fonz directed film uh, Cop and a Half with Burt mm -hmm. Reynolds, uh, Norman D. Golden, that must be a black, the black kid, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Ruby D. Let's have a look. What, what Norman's up to? What's, what's Norman up to these days? Uh, America's Dream he was in with Danny Glover. Uh, there, are, there are No Children Here with Oprah Winfrey. Moby Dick with Patrick Stewart. That was his last job in 1998. Oh, wow. So he must have done something else with his life, I guess. But uh, Norman D. Golden II, star or co-star of Cop and a Half, directed by Henry Winkler, the Fonz. Henry Winkler. Amazing. Such these names, man, honestly. I touched Henry's Winkler. <laughs> my corn syrup metal hand <laughs> uh, as a side note i've uh, just clocked onto ghost dad which is a bill cosby film i'm just trying to see the synopsis of it of... <laughs> going oh off track ethan going off track i'm uh, sorry just because bill sorry. cosby's such like a, a roofing it's just, it's just google as soon as as soon as you're near a computer that's it <laughs> you've become a, you've become a trapper keeper you just suck everything into you. I must have knowledge. Well, before you we wrap up, we've discussed the arm. We've mm -hmm. discussed the possible outcome for the side story, the side <laughs> quill, if you will, for Danny uh, Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look at what they're drinking as they're sitting down chatting to the Terminator about the end of the world. Right, hmm? I'm going to guess there's at least one coffee. because John's got an orange thing. juice, and it appears they've got these very dainty little teacups, almost like you'd have it. Term. It'd be OJ. Oh, okay. No, because OJ is obviously OJ Simpson, the uh, the quarterback who allegedly hacked his wife's head off. Alleged? He so did it. Well, they were talking about it on the radio the other day, the Opie and Anthony show, how well Patrice was saying he wouldn't have premeditated cut his wife's head off because basically yeah, Nicole Simpson attack. Nicole Simpson, I think he's then ex but on and off wife. Uh, was... She obviously really pissed him off. Well, yeah, but she was killed. <laughs> to get to a point where he'd cut her fucking head off. She was killed. <laughs> she was killed by the back door of her house, and she was cut so deeply on her neck, her head was almost completely off. Ron Jesus. Goldman, the waiter slash actor who she was kind of like seeing, fucking, uh, was also stabbed to death, and he had like defensive wounds. So he must have come to her aid, and then Big OJ must have just stabbed him to death. Uh, nice. I'd just like to have it noted that at uh, 1 hour 41 minutes and 52 seconds, if you freeze frame it, there's a butternut squash on Mr. Dyson's uh, kitchen table. A butternut squash. Well, at least he's healthy. Yeah. Although it's damn sight of good it's going to do him because he's about yeah. to die in the next few hours. Uh, yeah, they're, drink they're drinking out of these really like dainty teacups. <laughs> <It's this thing. laughs> oh, how quaint. I just think bone it's really funny. Bone China, the, the Queen's coming round. Yeah, you've got this Jane Austen-esque tea set and they're talking about Jane the end of the world with a killer robot who we just met. I, with I would have thought more Beatrix Potter, actually. <laughs> I, can imagine, I can imagine like a little bunny rabbit like jumping out with a waistcoat on. Exactly. Exactly. Quivering. What was it? Quivering rabbit nose. Oh, God. Pink quivering rabbit's nostril. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about your ex-wife's pussy. Nice. <gasps> oh my god. But which one? Uh, what other drinks can you see, Ethan? Because I'm not at that scene. I'm at the terrible corn syrup scene. Well, John kind of basically has a glass of orange juice. The Terminator doesn't. Well, that's an interesting thing. The Terminator doesn't have a drink, so I guess they don't take food internally. <laughs> Unless that's what you're into. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the bacon coming back out of you, dude. <clears throat> Uh, but no, that's it, really. They're drinking, uh, I, I suppose it's tea, and John's got a little orange juice. I'm going to guess it's coffee. People always go for coffee. Do you think he asked for the orange juice? So he's just like, we've already ruined no, these I, people's I lives. <laughs> Let's just go and grab an orange juice out of the fridge without asking. Yeah, my mum's already shot you, so I'm just going to fucking <laughs> make myself at home. And Sarah, you fucking stupid bitch, smoking. What kind of example is that setting, huh? I don't know. And, and then Marlboro Reds, not Marlboro Lights. How can you? How do you know they're marble reds? Because uh, you can see them. That it's a red pack. Because you can see them. What does your mum smoke? Uh, sovereign silver, I think. Sovereign, fucking hell! I remember my ex's mum used to smoke these cigarettes called Dunhills, and they came in these fancy packets, and they're like about an inch longer than the normal ones, and they are literally the most strongest cigarette you can buy, and the smell is acrid it is disgusting i remember we had to paint the kitchen one time and we moved loads of stuff and there was uh like a wardrobe well not a wardrobe but like a cupboard in the corner of the room we moved it and you could see where the ceiling was once white and all around it was this horrible like brown yellow color and i was like dude seriously she has to fucking stop smoking she has to die (laughs) She must die. Take her to the death yard, impure. After the death it's yard. Fucking gross, man. As I say, if that's what that's doing to paint. Anyway, I'm just gonna stop lecturing about smoking now. But just Sarah, you shouldn't be smoking, especially at a time like this. Concentrate, you dappy cow. You've just gone and shot an innocent man, and he's black. Would that be considered a hate crime nowadays? Uh, no, because he was trying to save the world. Yeah, but they're not gonna they're not gonna believe her. She's just broken out of a fucking insane asylum. Oh no, she's fucked. They would have to go a... She's been hanging around with the Mexicans in the desert and the next minute she's shot some some black dude. Yeah, it's oh god no, she would have to be on the run for the rest of her life. But yeah, good point. Nicely raised. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think I've raised all the points that I want to in this uh, episode. I think this has been a really good episode. It has. We talked actually about the clip in question and we did it without uh, well, hardly any facts. A retractable well, we knife. One, one fact attack, but I feel like we, we revealed facts as we went along. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we hopefully will, in the next couple of weeks, get uh, Sam Matthew. Big yep. up to your man. Uh, although he is literally the whitest person I've ever met, so he will not be speaking in any kind of jive. So I, I'm sorry if that excited anybody. Uh, he's even whiter than Martin, which is... I thought unbelievable. He's quite the chap, so it'll be quite interesting. But uh, yes, Sam, get on the fucking show. You're more than welcome. Um, Ed, still waiting for you to actually get your ass into gear. He wants to come on the show, but he's in the meantime, late. listeners, you can retweet, tweet, and uh, follow us on the Two Minute Terminator page. Uh, you can like yes. the Two Minute Terminator page on Facebook. Please do those things now. And uh... we have actually had 16 more likes in the last week. So <gasps> it's improving. Wow. We're on the up. <laughs> we are on the up. And on that bombshell. Hasta la vista. Jeez.